I believe that everybody has a lot of different parts. Yeah. And um, they form clusters in the way they protect us. And those clusters are what become diagnoses. And so all that label codependence, codependency does is describe a certain, it's a fairly accurate description of a cluster of protective parts that dominate certain people when they've been hurt in certain ways or they've been socialized in certain ways and stuck in certain roles in their family. And so, you know, we can talk about the common parts that are involved. That would be great, yeah. Okay, so in general, uh, people with that label are dominated by parts that are, uh, they're, they're caretaking parts, the huge, massive caretaking parts. And that actually is not a good place to start because that characterizes almost half the population. Mm -hmm. Because women in general are socialized to elevate these caretaking parts because we live in a patriarchal society. And so many, many women would qualify as codependent if they were in the right relationship. So, and these caretaking parts are desperate to make them feel good about themselves by caretaking mm -hmm. and also very reluctant to allow them to take care of themselves and set boundaries for themselves and stand up for themselves or ask directly for something. And so there are all kinds of communication problems. So not only with alcoholism, but most of the clients I work with, we do a lot with medical symptoms. Like we did a study uh, with rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. 40 RA patients in a, in a control group of 40 here at Brigham and Women's Hospital in, in Boston. And virtually all of them had that massive caretaking part. And the parts that were giving them the arthritis were polarized, were furious at the caretaking part for never letting them get access, never letting the client take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And as we worked that out, the arthritis got a lot better. Some people went into complete remission. So anyway, the biggest part with with those uh, with people with that codependent label are these caretaking parts. And generally, when you have a big caretaker, you have what we call an exile part, a part that uh, is young and vulnerable and stuck in bad places in the past, and carries what we call burdens, um, which are the definition, which is a uh, extreme belief or emotion that came into you from some kind of negative interaction. It could be a trauma, it could be an attachment injury from a parent. And then attached to the part, almost like a virus, which we all know about the virus now. Yeah, right. And then, and then drives the way the part operates thereafter. So many people with this massive caretaking part not only got socialized as a woman to lead from that part, but also got the message that they weren't valuable from their caretaker, partly because it's such a patriarchal society, or they're less valuable than the, the boys in the family or something like that, but also because, uh, like you mentioned, uh, they grew up in a family that was pretty dysfunctional and and sometimes alcoholic. And so they, at a young age, not only got the message that they weren't important, their needs weren't important, and had to exile all that, but also for their survival, they had to take care of their parents, or they had to take care of somebody. Who, uh, with, if they didn't take care of that person, they might be in peril. Mm -hmm. So. So then they also have this burden of fear for their own survival. So, so you've got these, this exile that carries worthlessness, 
And then you have an exile that carries a lot of fear about surviving. And then you have the protector, one is a caretaker, that thinks it's going to save your life by taking care of this person who you depend on to, to, to make it. And, uh, and then another protector who in order for you to stay f focused on this person's, uh, you know, being dependent on that person has to deny all the things the person is doing that are hurtful to themselves or to you. So that's another protector. You've got the big caretaking part, and now you've got a big denying part. And then you have that, you know, entitlement activity. Mm. So anyway, that's yeah, all. yeah. You got me going. Um, let me just see if I missed anything. You know, you usually will have a part that wants to be liked by everybody and mm -hmm. try to please everybody around you and uh, is similar, uh, similar to the caretaking part, but it's also very focused on how you're coming across. It's very, very uh, concerned with coming across in a certain way that people like and uh, gets very upset with you and can be very critical of you if you ever stray from that. Mm -hmm. So it's those three protectors, the caretaking, the people-pleasing uh, critic, mm -hmm. and then the uh, denying part. Yeah, yeah. And then the exiles, again, are the fear, and then the uh, worthlessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those you like pinpointed in that whole conversation just there, right? The, the fear and the worthlessness, those are two, I would say, like, it's kind of funny that you mentioned those because those are like these core um, experiences that I have of relating to the term codependency, fear of abandonment and not being good enough. So hence going into like the the lack of worth and, and worthiness. So if someone can uncover that through listening to this right now, where do they go from there? Like what, what does somebody do to help enrich their lives to be able to, I guess, not live in that fear and, and value themselves and start truly taking care of themselves in the process? Yeah, well, that's, that's what IFS is all about. And so I could describe um, how that might happen or, uh, if you wanted to do some work with your parts, I'd be happy to do that. Sure, and, yeah, and let's do it. Do it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so which of those parts do you want to start with? Um, I guess let's start with fear. Okay, good. So Andy, just focus on the fear and find it in your body, around your body. Okay. Where do you find it? Kind of like right in my heart area. Good. And as you notice that very, very fearful part, how do you feel toward it? I feel avoidant toward it. <laughs> like you don't want to get close to it. Yeah, or that's, that's my gut reaction. <laughs> is to avoid it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can understand that, but uh, let's just see if the part that's so afraid of it is willing to give us the space to just get to know it a little bit and maybe help the fear. Okay. We're not going to have you get overwhelmed by it. We're just going to maybe even help unload some of that fear. So see if the one who's so aversive to it to give us a little space to get to know it. Okay. How do you feel toward it now? I feel, I guess, compassion. You guess or you do feel compassion? I don't want I do you to... feel compassion. Okay. So let it know you have compassion for it and just see how it reacts.
it seems to like not be as isolated in where I feel it and it seems to be like dispersing more. Okay, good. And then ask what it wants you to know about its fear. And don't think of the answer. Just wait for an answer to come from your heart or somewhere where it's dispersed. Just wait for the answer. It wants to be validated. Validated for for being afraid, for yeah. things that happen. That for being afraid. Okay. And what do you say to it about that? Mm, I I guess like I hear you or I feel you. Good. Yeah. And how does it react now to your validating it or seeing it? It feels, I want to use the word better, but that's not really descriptive, uh, lighter. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So just stay with it and ask if it does trust that now you do care about it. Yes. Hi, right, Andy, then ask it what it wants you to know about where it got this fear in the past. And again, don't think of the answer. Just wait and see what comes to you. Fighting parents. Okay, good. So you see a scene where you're watching your parents fight? Yeah. Okay. And do you have a sense of how old you are in that scene? I would say maybe seven. Okay. All right. And as you see that seven-year-old, how do you feel toward her? Loving. Good. Protect protective. Good. So this is what I want you to do now. I want you to go into that scene and be with her in the way she needed somebody. And just tell me when you're in there with the seven-year-old. Okay, I'm there. How are you being with her? I'm loving and giving her physical touch and embracing her. How's she reacting? With just like relief. Good. Yeah, let her know she's not alone anymore. And you are going to protect her and take care of her now. And see if she wants you to do or say anything to the parents for her before we take her to a good, safe place. <laughs> You're like, this is not my problem. She wants you to say that to them? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do that. Go ahead and, and tell them that. Yeah. Okay. And how is that for her to watch it's you? Freeing. Yeah, good. And just see if there's anything else she wants you to do back there for her or she's ready to leave with you. I don't think there's anything else. Just ask her though. I want to hear it. Okay. I want to hear it from her. No. Okay. Then uh, is she ready to leave that time and place with you and come to a good safe place? Yes. All right, so take her wherever she'd like to go. It could be in the present, could be a fantasy place, whatever she'd like. Okay. Where do you have her? 
Um, she started off in Montana where she had a family cabin when she was growing up in, in the woods and was one of her favorite places. And then she came to the present. <laughs> so she's here now? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, stay in there with her. And ask her now that she's with you and you'll take care of her and you know, she never has to go back there. Ask if she's ready to unload the feelings and beliefs she got from those times. Yes. Okay. Ask what she'd like to give all that up to. Light, water, fire, wind, earth, anything else? Wind. Okay. And ask where she carries all that in her body or on her body. Yeah, she still carries some of it in her body. Whereabouts, though, in her body? In her chest and stomach. Okay, so bring in the wind and tell her to let that out of her chest and her stomach. Let it all go and let the wind carry it off till it's all gone. Okay. And how does she feel without all that? Free and light. Okay. If she'd like to now, she can invite into her body qualities she'd like to have. You can just see what comes into her now. Peace and playfulness. Good. And what does she want to do now? Inside of you. Play. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so tell her that's her new job is just to play in there and hope you be more playful. Mm. Okay. And then before we stop, bring in all your other parts to see they don't have to worry about her anymore because she's doing well. And just see how they react. They are relieved and peaceful. That's great. Okay, you ready to come back? Yeah. Wow, thanks for doing that. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you.